Hi everyone, it's me again. Um, this talk is about the importance of perfor performance uh, testing in ADV, uh, the challenges and uh, where the open source community is at these days. So we're going through a little bit of uh, the basics of performance testing really briefly. Uh, projects in the uh, OPNV area around performance testing. Um, I will talk a little bit more into details of the VSPerf architecture, which is also the tool I'm going to show you with the demo. Uh, some results that uh, we gathered uh, and the demo at the end. So, uh, in NFV, uh, performance are a crucial requirement uh, for the NFV offering. Um, the fact that something works is no longer uh, the problem or the only problem. Uh, and the, uh, the, the thing is, performance are really those uh, things, that requirement that is also driving really, really hard, the choice of, of both software and hardware. Uh, it's such an important aspect of uh, NFV that uh, entities uh, like Etsy and the IT, IETF uh, have dedicated quite a broad range of documents and uh, drafts around this topic. So you may appreciate uh, how important that is. Um, the, so a setup to benchmark NFV workloads helps to tune hardware and software parameters to increase throughput, latency, scalability, scalability uh, and obviously, yes, to reduce the latency, not to increase it. Um, obviously, uh, an automated infrastructure to run performance benchmarking uh, on NFVI is fundamental is of fundamental importance uh, to spot, for example, regression in any of the subcomponents used. So, what is the challenges uh, that that we see in the NFV with regards to performance? Well, they are both hardware related and software related. So, from a hardware setup perspective. Uh, you will face the choice of, for example, do I enable hyperthreading or not? Uh, what am I going to do with power management? Uh, what about huge pages? What about SRIOV? What about IUMMU? What about all the NIC offloads that these days I have on uh, very expensive NICs that very likely are part of the machine I have in my data center? And from a software design perspective, uh, there are obviously different choices that we can make. Are we going to pull packets or are we going to use an interrupt-driven approach? Um, what about threads? Am I going to affinitize threads to specific course or leave it up to the OS to schedule threads wherever it's best for the OS? Uh, am I going to use memory allocation techniques like memory pools, memory buffers, memory management, uh, infrastructure layers to, to manage my memory or I'm going to stick with the usual malloc? Uh, what am I going to do? And what about hardware-specific, architecture-specific uh, intrinsics, for example? Am I going to take advantage of the greatest and latest uh, SSE for instructions, or will I give it up? So there are just few of the questions that you left to, to ask yourself when you start you know, designing a software or a component in this NFV world uh, to, to embrace the performance requirements and also not to restrict yourself to just a specific niche. So what are we testing? Well, the, 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 what we are testing is called SUT, which stands for System Under Test. And uh, there are different things that we can test and that we want to test. So the, the, first of all, the, the first thing is we need to distinguish between 
what the VNF is versus what the NFVI is. So the VNF is the virtual network function, which is something that is, uh, is doing the work, is, is basically handling a specific type of traffic. So you can think of an application that is consuming traffic X or producing traffic X. And the NFVI instead is what I spoke just earlier about, which is all those software components that are part of the stack, the vSwitch, the DPDK, um, uh, the, 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 the controller, if you wish, which part of that overall stack you want to, to test uh, from a performance perspective. Uh, some of them are really on the, on the critical path of execution when, uh, when you're talking about networking, others are not impacted so much. Uh, then it's about how you test it. So which traffic profiles are we going to choose? As I said earlier, there are different type of requirements depending on the industry that you're in. So am I going to use small packets, mid-range packets, uh, IMX type of packets? Am I going to use jumbo frames at all on the network? Is it worth it? Is it not worth it? Uh, and then for how long my test scenarios will run on, in, in my lab? Is it just like one shot for a few minutes and, and that's it? Or am I going to run it for hours, days? Uh, when I'm going to say that it's good enough? And is a, a burst of traffic going to impact my study versus a continuous type of traffic? Well, depending on which choice you've made about your hardware and your software, yes, it will. So you will have to test both to see where you are. One thing is for sure, we, we have test objectives and um, uh, it's, a, it's a almost needless to say, but uh, we want very high throughput from our system. We want low latency, we want a very high number of flows to be handled by our, our, um, our platform. Uh, the more flows we can handle, the more things we can pack on one single machine. Uh, and we want it to be with a high capacity, which again goes very likely hand by hand with the high number of flows. So we want to make uh, the perfect use of our CPU, of our memory, uh, make the most basically out of what we have. Uh, and the last one is just like a, a wish uh, to, gain, to, to, to get the so famous linear scalability, uh, which is yeah, just a wish and a dream. So uh, what about the test profiles? Uh, well, there are in the, based on what I said uh, at the earlier talks, we, we, we are facing two different type of scenarios. Because of the vSwitch, now we can have intra-VM traffic and we can have inter-machine traffic. So we want to verify both. We want to see how a, how our machine behaves when we have east-west type of traffic and how it behaves when we have north-south traffic. Uh, and these scenarios are the ones that we are actually going to verify. Um, last but not least, we also have the different type of uh, layers in the protocol stacks. So the vSwitch, as we said, is usually doing an L2 type of work, but what if I'm doing VXLAN? And what I'm about if I'm using overlays and underlays networks, am I going to do L3s? Am I going to do L4s? Um, and is it worth it? Is it not worth it? Well, it depends really on uh, what your use case is and what you're, what you're going to deploy in your production environment. And that's, that's what's driving, is driving your final test case. Uh, and then obviously the number of flows, which is also very important to, to verify and test the scalability of the system. Uh, is it just like one single flow? Is it a few hundreds, thousands, millions of flows hitting the, the server uh, or your switch-based software in this case? Uh, then we have to talk about the metrics that we want to collect in order to, to come up with our report. Uh, 
Obviously, we want to collect the throughput, which is usually measured in million packets per second. Uh, the latency, these days, it's, uh, it's very common to get it in nanoseconds. The flows, as I said, in number. The CPU utilization, which is taken as a percent of the usage or free, depending on what's being chosen. And the memory, again, as a percent of the total system memory on the system. So because we, we want to make sure that we have a reproducible environment, there are a few choices that we have to make, um, even if they might mean less performance for our system. The reason why I'm saying that is because there are a few things that can boost your system to a much higher degree of performance, but when you go into the study of performance, you need to make sure that your environment is reproducible. Otherwise, you will never know what you measured once versus another time. And it becomes very, very difficult to then come up with a rationale behind the tuning or the changing of a specific setting. So because of that, and because of the higher degree of uncertainty of the system, uh, the hyperthreading is usually disabled, the power management gets disabled, uh, things like C states and P states, they can be turned off. Um, what you usually do is to, to tune the system via the uh, user space governor on Linux. So you set it to user space governor, you can change through the CPU frequency tool, the frequency that you want to set it to. Uh, you can set it to the maximum and just run it at that speed. Uh, something else, just because of very likely the tools that then you're going to use and the software components that are going to be deployed on the machine. It's, a, it's very likely the huge pages to be enabled, uh, the IOMMU enabled in pass-through mode, uh, SRIOV enabled, uh, and wherever possible, the NICO loads. So trying to, to get advantage of the hardware that we have as much as possible. I think it's clear, uh, but if you think about all the stuff that I said so far, uh, what we want to test, how to test it, and what to get out of it. You're talking about a matrix that is no longer a 2x2 two two or a 4x4, four four, not even an 8x8. Eight eight. It's a huge matrix. Um, and the way I like to think about it is, a, is of a tuple made of which kernel am I using? Uh, it's important in some cases to, to, to identify and verify the, the goodness of real-time behaviors for, for things like jitter and latency for specific workloads. So I'm, I'm going to use a out-of-the-box kernel, vanilla kernel, and an RT version of it, uh, which stands for real-time. Uh, the packet sizes going from the smallest 64 bytes packet all above the jumbo frames and mixed in between with iMix traffic to verify the so uh, usual enterprise data center type of traffic. Uh, multiple streams going from one to a thousand to a million to verify how my system scales. Uh, the traffic types, L2 versus L3 versus L4, uh, and the scenarios. As I said, we have physical to physical machine, we have physical to VM, which then goes back to, to physical, and then we have intra-VM, which is the PVVP scenario. Uh, and for all of this, we want to capture the throughput, latency, the CPU utilization, memory utilization. Uh, so why, why is it in, so important to to run the performance testing in NFV. Because uh, the architecture itself is made of many, many different parts. Uh, most of them uh, interact with each other uh, and they're all developed and maintained by different communities. Which means that each community may have specific functional testing and performance testing based on input that they might get from 
uh, other stakeholders. And that's also the reason where, uh, that's, that's where OPNAV as an open source project comes in, trying to basically consolidate and harmonize the different components and making sure that uh, use cases and test cases can be defined um, and verified uh, as a whole. Uh, and as I said as well, the, the, super, the superset of the test cases is huge. Uh, and in this case, because of all the data that is being collected, uh, automation helps really a lot uh, because it takes a lot of time just to run the tests and then you have to process the, the results and make something out of it. So in, in this regards, as I said, OPNFV, which is the open source project for NFV, uh, has two different projects. Uh, one is called VSPerfs, VSPerf, and the other one is called the RSIC. So VSPerf uh, provides an automated test framework uh, and also a comprehensive test suite, which is based on uh, industry standards. Um, and, is able, and is basically used to measure data plane performance of telco NFV switching. Uh, we, in the lab, we have, a, we have a set up using VSPerf, and actually I'm going to show you just later how it looks like and what it does. Uh, the nice thing of VSPerf is that it's traffic generator agnostic. In fact, it, it supports four or five different uh, traffic generators, talking about Ixia, Spirant, and few others, and also has support for Moongen, which is a, a Lua-based traffic generator, which is the one that I'm actually using. Uh, currently, it supports OpenV switch, it supports OpenV switch DPDK and VPP as V switches to be tested. Um, and it has all the nice things that I already mentioned before. So it allows me to change packet sizes, number of flows, uh, which type of traffic I want to, to play with. Um, and uh, what we did as part of the community with SUSE, we have basically took this project, uh, we had the support for OpenSUSE, uh, and we start contributing to features like multiple flows and uh, latency to be collected via uh, the use case using MoonGen. This is all available upstream, so all this work has been done upstream and can be found on the VSPerf GitHub of OpenAV. The other, uh, the other project called the RSTIC, instead, uh, is, is aimed to, to, to test the infrastructure compliance of VNF applications. So while this VSPER focuses exactly on the vSwitch part, uh, Yarsic tries to identify performance issues or gaps from a VNF perspective. Uh, in fact, if you, if, you, if you look for it on, on the internet, you'll see that a lot of the tests uh, run by Yarstick, they use things like the, the ping, uh, netperf, uh, they use the top command to get specific type of things on different VMs, uh, but it's all targeted to the VNF world. From that perspective, we are not so much interested in focusing on this specific type of project because uh, it's more for VNF vendors that, that they, they might use this as a, as a sort of performance and functional testing. Uh, still, uh, what Yarstick does is to use OpenStack to basically deploy the VMs and deploy all the environment that's being used for running a specific test case. Um, and what it does very nicely is that allows you to have different type of backends to collect your data. One of the backend to be used, that can be used is InfluxDB, uh, which obviously can also be linked to Grafana, and automatically you get your plotted charts of a specific um, uh, workloads. And that works pretty nicely. 
Uh, when I approached this project, uh, there was no support for uh, for SUSE distribution, so there was quite a bit of work to be done there in terms of adding the support for it uh, and fixing all the documentation piece and bits and pieces. Uh, and again, that's been working upstream, so it's available upstream uh, to be used on a, on a SUSE distribution. So, as I said, I'm going to, to focus on VS Perf mainly for this. Uh, how does it look like the system architecture? Where, first of all, the uh, the traffic generator that you see on the left hand side, uh, in my case, that's a server machine. Um, for whoever has a, a very expensive traffic generator in the lab, like uh, XE or Spirant, they, it could be one of those machines. Um, the concept, anyway, is the same. Whether you're using uh, a proprietary traffic generator or an open source traffic generator, with in my case was Moongen, uh, you have to connect back to back two machines. So you have two ports on one machine, two ports on the other machine, and you basically interconnect the servers using these four different ports. Uh, one port would send the traffic to the other machine, the machine would route the frame on the port of the same server and just send it out to the other port of the other machine. From a no PNAV infrastructure perspective instead, specifically to VSPerf, uh, we have the traffic generator, which is MoonGen, as I said, and the traffic generator can speak to the VSPerf running on the SUT, which is the system under test, so is able to basically send back the, the data collected, the information collected, uh, and can also be configured by VSPerf to run a specific type of tests. And I'll show you it in, in practice what, what's, ha what's happening. But basically VSPerf uh, uses its own configuration files uh, for traffic, for uh, which vSwitch to be used, uh, if you're using a specific VNF or not. All this, config, all this configuration is collected, is packed in a conf config file, which is shipped to the traffic generator uh, and is, uh, is uh, under the form of a Lua configuration file. That's because Moonjan is based on Lua. Uh, copied in a specific folder where the traffic generator picks it up and starts running the flows. So just briefly, because I said which scenarios are important to us. Well, the first one is the physical to physical. In order to know what is the capability of your system, the first thing to do is to not think about all the virtualization and VMs that can run on your machine. All you want to do is to really have a shortcut between the port where the frames are received to the port where the frames are sent. This is the shortest path for a frame to be going from port, port egress to the port ingress. Then you have the physical to VM to physical. So what happens when my frame is sitting the V switch and the V switch takes the decision to send the frame to a specific VM. And when this VM then routes the packet out to the, to the V switch, which then sends it to the, to, the, to the network. Finally, there is the more complex scenario where you have the frame hitting your V switch, then going up to a VM, and then that VM decides to send that frame to another VM. This is the intra VM flow. So the V switch takes this frame again, figures that out, sends it to another VM, and then the second VM instead decides to send the packet out. So the V switch will figure this out and send it to the to the network card. So I'll show you I'll show you some results that I collected. Uh, do not focus too much about the platform that I'm using. It's a it's quite a big, powerful platform, but it doesn't have to be like this. So in my case, it's uh, four blades with 96 cores. Uh, 
256 gigabyte of RAM. It's just a huge machine. It's not even needed. Um, and as I said, I'm running both the vanilla kernel and an RT version of the kernel in different cases for, for latency purposes. Um, the V switches are both with DPDK and non DPDK. Uh, and the VNF that basically takes care of the packet forwarding in the VM is the so-called test PMD that comes with, uh, with DPDK. And is basically capable of taking the packet and making a forward of the packet, just changing the MAC address of it. So hopefully you can see this. Um, the three different the three, the three different lines are the three different use cases, right? Is the physical to physical, the physical to VM to physical, and then the physical, VM, VM, physical. In a short, it's a P2P, PVP, PVVP. Uh, what is really nice to, to see and is not new to the, to the networking world and uh, the DPDK world is the big gap and the big gain that uh, you actually get by using DPDK versus a non-DPDK mode for, uh, for packet processing. It's, uh, it goes, the P2P scenario goes from a shy 20% to at 70% of throughput for a 10 gigabit network card. And here we're actually using the V switch. So it's not just going in, going out. Uh, and in a similar way, the, the good things done by the OVS DPDK with regards to Indra VM traffic where for very small packet sizes, which are the 64 bytes packet, uh, I think the, it was 0.7%. Uh, that's already gone up to, to 10 and above. So you're talking about 10x magnitude. Another, another experiment which was nice, um, was the, the comparison of the vanilla kernel versus the RT kernel uh, with an eye on the latency aspects of the traffic. So if you have telco workloads and you are very strict jitter requirements. Uh, again, in this case, what's nice to observe is the, the better job or the different job done by the RT kernel versus the vanilla kernel with regards to the latency. So we go from all the way up to the 60,000 nanoseconds, that's gone down to, to the maximum of 25,000. Um, uh, one thing though, this, this scenario was with the standard OVS vanilla, the standard OVS that comes out of the box, not the DPDK mode. So this guy is affected by the interrupt management, um, by uh, context switching happening on the, on, on, on the box. And that's where the RT patch is really doing a great job. In fact, if we take the OVS DPDK instead and we, we do the same comparison, we take the vanilla kernel and the RT kernel, then all the benefits of it, they disappear. And it kind of makes sense because DPDK is just pulling continuously from the network card. It's pinned to a specific thread on your, on your, on your core. That core is never interrupted. It just keeps pulling, 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 pulling. So the beneficial effects that the RT patch has on the interrupts uh, are not really seen in a user space polling mode from in DPDK. Uh, again, this chart puts just side by side the, the different results gained for both OVS and OVS DPDK. Um, and if it wasn't clear before, it kind of shows the 3x boost of the OVS DPDK versus the OVS vanilla running for 64 bytes packet. Uh, and the same thing can be, can be seen uh, about the vanilla kernel 
versus the RT kernel for OBS DPDK, where the only real benefit uh, can be seen at a 512 bytes packet, where the most complex scenario, the PBVP scenario, uh, can reach line rate much, much sooner than, than before. Uh, finally, uh, just the latency results put side by side. I would skip the, the mean and the max because they're usually either really, really bad because of anything or too good. So it's just represent the noise. Uh, but the average uh, is actually showing how the RT kernel uh, benefits the, the OVS vanilla uh, for packet processing in a, in a low, lower latency environment. Um, this is something that uh, was already showed in the other charts, but this is just uh, a summary of the mean, the max, and the average latency. So now, if you bear with me, I'll show you what's happening from a demo perspective. OK. So I have this two machine, one is called from. Fun enough, it's actually the machine sending the traffic. Um, and another machine that's called low, which is basically uh, represent the traffic generator. So from is my SUT, the system under test, and low is where the traffic generator will eventually run. Now, VSPerf, as I said, allows you to run a huge variety of use cases. Okay, so um, what it was? Yes, so from is the SUT, low is the traffic generator, and they are connected back to back through two different ports port zero, port zero, port one, port one. So I'm going to run VSPerf, telling VSPerf to use the moon gen traffic generator or configuration, and to test the vSwitch OVS DPDK. I could say OVS vanilla or I could say VPP to test the other vSwitches. What this does, it goes through my configuration, uh, figures out where on the traffic generator machine to put the configuration file um, and instructs the traffic generator to send a specific type of traffic based on my configuration. Uh, all the configuration can be s found in the conf directory under here, which, hold on a second.
you have all this set of files and they are used to configure different aspects of the of the tests um, the main ones are really the o2 p switch o3 traffic uh, in case you're doing the virtual machine type of test you care about the vnf the 0.4 vnf.conf uh, and that's it so what's happening hit run so VSPerf now is configuring OVS DPDK with the rules and the flows that's, that are needed to basically run all the use cases that it has configured. In this case, it's going to run both the physical to physical, the physical to VM to physical, and the physical to VM to VM to physical. So it's quite a lot going on. What you see now here in, uh, in yellow uh, and uh, brighter white, these are actually the messages coming from the traffic generator that's running on the other side, that's running on the other, on the other machine. In fact, if I do a top here, I would see that the first process that's running there is a Moongen, which is my traffic generator, who's using actually DPDK to burst packets, to send packets to the network. And these tests will keep run. The way that VSPerf works is uh, it starts from the highest of uh, highest possible um, throughput. So in case of uh, a 10 gigabit network card, is 14.4 million packets per second. Uh, and it uses a, a binary search to find what is the throughput that can happen with 0% packet loss. Actually, the packet loss is configurable. You can tell Moongen, you can tell VSPerf to, to be happy with 5% packet loss. But if you want to stick to the RFCs for performance testing, then it should be at 0.002% to make it real. So it will keep sending traffic. Uh, and as you say, as you see, you say the, the, the first, the first lot finished and we found out that it's a 55% packet loss with a 14.4 traffic. Uh, so it will keep going. And now it basically goes half of it, sending 7.55 uh, until it finds out which is, the, uh, which is the throughput of the system. At the same time, it collects also the latency and the latency is stored on the traffic generator machine and can be correlated with specific IDs to which traffic type you send and which test case you're running. Um, this is pretty much it. And this is VSPerf. It, will run, it runs for a while. If you run all the tests, it takes like a eight, nine hours to, to finish it up. So just running in the morning and you find the results in the evening. Thank you. If you have any questions. Okay, thanks.